Hi everyone, we're here to talk about Drupal and rules as code. Uh, this is good, what, what we're going to cover in this short session. So we'll have a quick introduction, uh, a little bit of information about what is rules as code. Uh, we'll look at a GovCMS proof of concept that we completed around rules as code, some of the process behind rules as code, um, and also of course the most important part, given this is a Drupal meetup, is Drupal's involvement um, in rules as code for Salsa projects. And then we'll have a Q&A at the end as well. So just a few quick introductions. So my name's Philippa Martin. I work at Salsa Digital doing uh, Rules as Code and also as a content specialist. Um, my work in Rules as Code um, covers both uh, business analysts and also um, content. Hi, my name is Sujika. I'm a technical manager at Salsa Digital. Um, in this particular project, the Rules as a Code project, I was working as a tech lead and, and a developer as well. So the Drupal part of the Drupal integration with rules as code was something that I focused on. Okay, so just a little bit of background or context. Um, so basically, Salsa responded to a GovCMS request for expressions of interest for a digital experience platform solution. Um, there were six potential user journeys listed, and one of them stood out to us in particular. Um, which is the stage where a citizen is figuring out what they need to do to either access an entitlement or to comply with a government policy or a legal requirement. Um, the reason why this stood out to us is because it could be solved by Rules as Code. And in fact, at the time, we were already working on another Rules as Code project that specifically looked at codifying New Zealand's Social Security Act um, so that citizens could answer a few questions to find out what benefits they were entitled to and how much they should be getting as well. So let's talk a little bit very briefly, what is rules as code? So rules as code is basically taking legislation, regulations or policies um, and making turning it into machine readable code. There are several benefits that this represents, including an reduced ambiguity, making it more accessible, reusable, easier to manage, transparent, and also using it to inform policy. At the moment in this space, in terms of the rules as um, rules as code dev tools, Open Fisker is the main tool. Um, it's used for rules as code. It's lightweight, modular, and scalable Python-based rules engine. It's open source, which of course we like. Uh, it's also been developed by the French government in 2011, so it's been around for a little while. Um, and it's now used for rules as code projects in New Zealand, Australia, Canada, um, as well as other jurisdic jurisdictions, and of course, France itself. Uh, just briefly, we'll look at a very high level of the solution architecture, just in terms of where everything fits. Um, so obviously, at the top of this diagram here, we have our end users, uh, and then they may be coming in to, um, to view the rules as code or find out information via a website, uh, mobile apps, possibly a voice device of some sort, uh, and then those apps or um, user interfaces are talking to both Drupal and OpenFisca. So let's have a little bit more about uh, a look at this rules as code for GovCMS proof of concept that we did. Um, so we were successful in our expression of interest and GovCMS asked us to create a proof of concept. Specifically, they wanted us to look at COVID vaccinations. So they wanted us to help citizens understand if their COVID-19 vaccination status is up to date. Um, we looked at the uh, main journey was, am I up to date with my COVID vaccinations? We also wanted to look at another journey that would demonstrate how state information could also be brought into a rules as code system. And to do this, we also added a journey, do I have to be vaccinated for my work? So what you've got on screen here is final product. Um, this is two websites, uh, I'll look at one of those in a moment, that look at COVID vaccination in Australia. Um, the way main website contains both user journeys, so the one about am I up to date with my COVID vaccinations, and also do I need to be able to, um, am I up to date to work? Uh, but then we also created another interface, um, in this case a hypothetical website dedicated to our First Nations people. The First Nations website contained information about the user's Indigenous heritage and then tags that user a priority booking when they're transferred to the booking system. So let's take a quick look at one of these websites. 
Okay. Um, so basically, um, these are some examples of the sorts of um, scenarios that people could be asking themselves. So perhaps they're a 55 year old adult who's had five doses, um, and or maybe they're a 32 year adult, 32 year old adult who's had three doses. A parent looking for information for a 15 year old immunocompromised child. Um, or a parent looking for information for a four-year-old. So I will just open this up. I actually need my glasses. Okay, so can everybody see that website at the moment? Thumbs up. Okay, so as you can see, um, this website was actually just created to um, show what a coronavirus dedicated website might look like. Um, but it's actually only these two links here that are active. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I know given we're in a Drupal meetup, we want to get on to the Drupal stuff. Um, but just to give you a quick look at how it works. So um, given a little bit of introductory information, then we can press start. Uh, we're shown where we are in the journey. So the first thing we need to enter is our age. I'm going to put 32. Uh, and then it takes you to information about your health. So if you're immunocompromised or not, let's say no. And then it's got information about your um, how many doses of the vaccine you've had. So in this case, we'll say two doses and maybe the last one was, let's put it quite recently. There we go. Okay, so if we hit submit, uh, that then talks to the open fiscal and Suchi will talk a little bit more about how that works in a moment. Um, but it just lets the person know you're currently not up to date with your COVID-19 vaccinations. Uh, it gives them some information about how many doses they should have had, uh, what the recommended vaccine is based on their age, um, and also some information about the fact that because they're over 18, they could also access these other three vaccines. Uh, the information that's highlighted in yellow is information that's being returned from Open Fisca and Drupal. Um, so take a step back now and look at the actual RS um, rules code process. So how we get to that point. Um, so basically, we've got a few different steps involved. First of all is the rules analysis and mapping. Uh, then we go into Open Fisca configuration and coding. Uh, then we start using the Drupal Open Fiscal module and the Drupal web form um, and also setting up the results. So um, we could go into each of these in a lot of detail, but we're not going to. I'm just going to very briefly cover rules mapping. So generally, we would initially do some sort of extraction of the rules in plain English. Um, in this case, we looked at it by person's age, given that was how the COVID vac vaccinations were working. Uh, then we create a high-level model that, that captures um, entities, any legislative requirements, eligibility logic, um, and calculation logic. So obviously that doesn't apply to, um, to this one, but more calculation logic in terms of, for example, if we're working at how much social security benefit someone should be eligible for. From there, um, we go into the process of actually codifying the rules. Um, so we create test scenarios, create entities, create parameters, create variables, including the input and output. Now we're getting into technical <coughs> stuff. So you know what that means? I'm handing over to Suchi. So, so this is the, the rules code configuration actually goes into Open Fisca. And in, in Open Fisca, we start with some with the entities, parameters, and variables. And variables are of two types. One are the inputs and the, the second one is the output. As clearly seen here, the output are, are actually calculated. So in the flow that we saw where Philippa was, um, the, what Philippa was showing, each and every one of the web forms that you saw, they were actually, whenever there was a submit, it was going back to Open Pesca and coming back with a response. So the, in, in, as an example, in the first one, it asked for an age, it went to open Fisca and asked which, what is the maximum, what is the minimum age? It, it checked uh, that. So if uh, Philippa had put in, for example, two years, it would have come back and said, no, you cannot have, a, uh, you cannot, you're not eligible for a vaccine. 
So that is how these things are, are done. Um, so any these parameters variables inputs are defined in OpenFISCA. Output are calculated output. And Drupal basically just makes API calls to OpenFISCA with proper uh, with the required parameters as well as the uh, variables. All right, so I'll, again, I'll walk through these very quickly. This is basically essentially around the open fist kind of it. This is an example of a test case that was created in open fist where we are, we have, we have a, the, the scenario is 10 year old with two vaccine doses, whether they are up to date or not. And then we have a period, we have the inputs, and then we have an output, calculated output. And this is an example of uh, the configuration. As you can see, this is a Python code um, because OpenFISCA is Python based and rules can be calculated for different entities. Now there are different entities in OpenFISCA. Some of the entities can be person, persons, household, companies, etc. So in this case, the entity was person. And this is another example um, uh, of a rules code configuration where a parameter is being defined. So the parameter is mainly age of eligibility and it has various attributes like description and metadata and values, et cetera. And the last part of, of the rules code configuration is the variables. So we create input variables. So for example, again, the flow that Philippa defined, the first input variable was age. The second input variable was, are you immunocompromised or not? So uh, if you look at the second number here, immuno immunocompromised disability, that was the variable that was used in here. And the third web form that we had, it asked two questions, which were around how many doses have you had? And what was the last vaccine dose? And th these are the two variables that were taken as input. And once we have the inputs, we have the variables, we have the parameters, then the calculation actually happens. So in this example, we are showing you the calculation of whole vaccination up to date, and then it has different variable attributes. Okay, so that was the open FISCA part of it. Now let's try to see the group in the puzzle here. Um, for making sure that Drupal is able to talk to OpenFISCA and, and get in relevant information, send relevant API calls, etc., we went ahead and created a custom module. The name of the module was WebFormFISCA because we are not too intuitive when it comes to naming things. Um, so essentially, the concept can be split into two part, parts. One is the rules content, and the another thing is the related content. So the, the aim of using Drupal was so that we can we could make the editor experience as painless as possible. And maybe the second reason was because we know Drupal. Uh, we use web forms because then we could easily ask questions and tailor our journeys. And we also went, went ahead and so, so this, even the rules content is actually divided into two. One is the creation of the web forms, which asks for things. And the second is that we went ahead and created a content type which said, okay, this is a web form. When it is returning with this, this, this value, you go to this node. When it's returning with this, this, this value, go to this node, et cetera, et cetera. So that is how we were able to curate our journeys. Again, taking the example that Philippa took, the first, well, first web form was fairly straightforward. It just asked for the age. But when the age was sent to OpenFISCA, the return value could be either say either eligible for vaccine or not eligible for a vaccine. So the node would node associated with this particular waveform said, if it is eligible for vaccine, then go to the next waveform. If it is not eligible for a vaccine, go to this particular node, wherein we uh, in Drupal, we had put a content, hey, you're not eligible for vaccine because you have to be minimum this age. So that's how we uh, manage the whole journeys that we, uh, we just showed there. <clears throat> just working again on whatever uh, I just talked about. So step one was, how old are you? Um, 
whenever we press submit or next in this case, it went to open Fisca, came back with a, with a response. And based on that response, it would either go to step two or it would go to another page and say, you're not eligible. If you are eligible, it, it will go to step two and it will ask you, are you immuno immunocompromised? The reason why we ask that is because the rules for immunocompromised people change, the vaccination rules. And in the next step, we are asking how many doses have you had and what was the last date? And this data, along with all the data collected earlier, is sent again to Open Fisca. And based on the return value, they either show something like, congratulations, you're currently up to date. Or in the case that Philippa showed, for example, where it said, you're, you're not up to date, you need to have three doses, go ahead and book your third dose. So how did it actually work? So the let's, I'll just show you some screenshots and then we'll probably go to the website and I'll show you the actual uh, Google backend as well. Uh, so the module we created, it allowed us to add a few things. Number one was we created an open, open fiscal journey handler, which is basically the code that defines where you're going, that, um, that massages the input, sends the API calls, uh, receives the API responses, et cetera, et cetera. So that is what we have. So and that is what we associate with the web form. And the second thing is that in the web form, we're able to define the, we, we are able to define that, yes, we want this web form to be open FISCA integrated. And we can also define the endpoint of open FISCA. So if you look at, if you look at this one, this is the open FISCA endpoint. Now, the moment open FISCA endpoint is defined, how does it help us? It basically helps us in this way. So if you go to, if you see the screen, this is a web form. And when I edit one of the fields there, I can actually see a new field showing up there, which says, okay, tell me the mapping. What is the link to FISCA variable? And here it gives me a listing of all the open FISCA variables defined on that FISCA endpoint automatically. So basically, as an example, again, the first form, the form itself may be something like, what is your age? But here, if you look at the last option there, there is an, a, a variable called age and we can associate both of them. So this helps us in uh, marrying the fields with the open FISCA variables. Um, and the second part that we talked about was uh, Drupal rules content. But before I do that, do you actually want to see the web form backend or are the screenshots explanatory enough? Um, so Chick, can you show the web form? Is sure. Okay, thanks. Yep, yep. Yes, can you please log in? And how, how does the data get into Open Fisco also? Is that like a bus set that gets, did I miss that bit? Sorry, um, I didn't get your question. So you, you're pulling in like uh, variables from Open Fisco, is that right? So they're defined, I'm not quite understanding. So, okay. Um, so in Open Fisco, the Open Fisca just has data. It has got variables, it has got parameters, and then it has a call called calculate, which takes mm -hmm. the input variables and based on the question asked, it returns whatever we want to. Can you try this? <laughs> okay. I don't remember why. <laughs> Sorry, continue on. I didn't mean to throw a scanner in the works. All right, I'm just pausing the call for a second. We are having trouble logging in. Just hold on. Yeah, yeah, Julia, go ahead and ask questions while Philip is trying to uh, log in. Oh, that was pretty much the only question I had. I was just curious how it all connects in. I like the interface that you were showing on the screenshot though, of how you just select which one you want for the rules. Yes. That was pretty uh, nifty. And I should be able to demo that yeah. as well. Hold on, please. I think that's really clear. All right. 
All righty, we are in. So, Julia, I'll just very quickly show you the whole interface and the back end. Oh, where is the mouse? Yeah, okay. Sorry, this is not my laptop, so it's a bit difficult for me to. Ah. It is a strange mouse, too. It is a strange mouse. Never mind. I'm used to... <laughs> okay. So, what I'll do, Julia, is I'll just show you uh, one of the web forms, probably the simplest one. And please ignore the <laughs> messy stuff. So the first one is about you. And I'll open it in a new data tab just so that we have access there. So this this was a form which asked me uh, about how old am I? So let, if, let me go to the settings part of it. So the first thing that I showed was that we can add a handler. And when I clicked on add handler, I had an option of adding an open fiscal journey handler. That's how I, I added it. And then when I go to the general part of it, at the bottom you got a, you get third party settings. And this is the third party settings. And within the third party settings, there was a, there's a section of open Pisca. This is showing up because of our module only. And it says, okay, open, enable the open Pisca RC integration. And we say yes. And this is the endpoint that we can add. Now, this is also a useful variable because this is the variable that we will be focusing on from whatever return values are coming. So open Pisca tends to dump all the values as return values, but in this particular form, we are interested in just one value. That is why we are putting that as well in here. Now there is another field as well. You don't need to worry about that field much because, I, and I'll tell you why. Let's go to the build part of it before. So uh, when I go to the build, You can see that there are actually three fields and the submit button. Two of the fields are hidden. One of one is one of them is not. Let me just edit the hidden field first and the non-hidden field field first. So the title is uh, how old are you? The key at the moment is age, but the key could have been anything. We don't really worry about that. But because of that integration, we have this link with a variable field coming in. And this actually pulls in all the variables we find at the endpoint and it lists them. Got it. So this way we can create multiple fields and associate them with the FISCA variables. There are web forms where you don't need to send fields to open FISCA, and then that's where you would say exclude. So open FISCA works a bit uh, strangely in the sense that. Um, it needs all the values to be sent there for each and every call. Uh, so if you, if you remember when I was seeing what is the return value, it, it needs us to send the return value as well as false. Only then it will send it back. Uh, so that's why, because in that particular field, Again. Okay, so in that particular field, we had said COVID vaccination age eligibility is, is the value that we want. So we need to add that as well in the web form because Open Pesca would expect that. So I'll show you show this to you again. Uh, so this is a hidden field. It has a title. Uh, it has uh, some title which doesn't matter actually. And it is actually linked to the COVID vaccination age eligibility. So that's how OpenFisk actually works, that whatever we want as output also needs to be sent across in the API call. And so instead of hard coding them or trying to figure out what to send during the API call, we have added everything into the web form and then just started using that. I can give, I can show you another web form. So this one is a, probably a, a bit bigger web form. And again, When we are building it, we have a few fields which are showing up, but a lot many fields which are not showing up. The reason is that in this particular call, there were so many combinations and permutations of data that needed to be returned back that we needed all of them. So take for example, that is this one is COVID vaccination doses recommendation up to date. Are you up to date or not? 
And this one, are you eligible for that? Are you eligible for the full vaccination? How many recommended, how many vaccines are recommended for your use case? These are all the values that come in back from the API and we are easily able to show them the results set because they are coming in, we put them as tokens in our in our result pages. Got it. Does that help visualize a bit? Better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. Now coming back to our um, one sec. Yep, coming back to our um, presentation again. So that was about the web form. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, there's a second part to the rules pointing, and that is uh, that is creating the journey. So basically deciding what happens when this value is returned as this. Where do we go? So instead of, again, hard coding that, we put that power into the content creator. So what we did was we created a content uh, a content type called rules as code. What else? And in this one, we can actually add multiple rules like this, as you see in the screen. So it basically says if the variable COVID vaccination is eligibility comes as false, then go here. If the so, so we can add multiple rules, and it says this one, for example, says if this is true and this is false, then redirect to this page. If this is true, this is false, redirect to next page, etc. 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 So that way, that is how we are defining our flow. So in the flow that Philippa showed, the first one was the, the most simple one. So that one basically said if the eligibility is coming true, then go to the next web form. If the eligibility is coming as false, go to node X, Y, Z. And node X, Y, Z is the node where we are putting content, sorry, you're not eligible. And we, are, we have also put in uh, some tokens which show what is, what is the eligibility date. Again, I can show this, uh, how this works. So when I go to content, And I'll just show content type RFC. So because we had three, four forms, that is the number. So each web form will have one node of the type RFC associated with it. So this is the first one. And it says, this is about go to about you form. And if value of COVID vaccination eligibility is false, redirect to not eligible. If it is true, then redirect to about your health. And about your health is the page which has the next form. So that is why we put the power of this defining the journey also in the content editor's hands rather than trying to, you know, doing this hard coding or something like that. And this that one was a pretty simple one. But let's talk about this one. This is more complex or pretty complex. So this has a combination of so many variables. So if this is true, this is true, go here. If this is true, this is false, go here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these need to be in the order of preference as well. So this, this is how the rules content was defined. Any questions by anybody? Okay, I'm assuming no questions. All right, so rules content, yes. But now what about the related content? As I mentioned that with different scenarios, we are going to different pages and each of our different pages was, well, different. So uh, Philippa had already showed you uh, one of the pages. So the Drupal related content pages were fairly simple. They were just standard content types, standard page content, or because we use civic theme, we all use the default content type that comes with it. The only difference there was we were using tokens. So that is why whatever you see as yellow here are the tokens that are coming in from OpenFISCA. <clears throat> so what we did was that when we were redirecting to pages based on the rules, we were making sure that all the variables and their values are in the URL. And based on that, we were defining our tokens as well. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what we did with it. Any questions? 
Okay. Uh, just going to finish off um, very briefly with um, other rules as code applications or rules as code in Drupal that we've done recently. Uh, so I mentioned at the start that we were working um, before the GovCMS proof of concept came up that we were working on a um, codifying New Zealand Social Security Act. So, um, and that website is now live, the first um, version of it, alpha version, which um, codifies four of the social security um, benefits. It's called Benefit Me. And basically we fed the learnings into our longer term project in New Zealand. Uh, Benefit Me, we created the web form that integrates with OpenFISCA to check eligibility for four social security benefits. It includes a calculation logic. So this is where it returns you're eligible for $476 a week, or whatever it might be. Um, and people can find out more about that one at benefitme.nz, uh, but it's using the um, same Drupal module um, and all the same sort of um, technology and um, tooling that we um, set up for the GovCMS one. Yeah. That is it. Any questions? Now I'm trying to make this question up as I go, so bear with me. But... Open Bisca as a rules evaluation engine, right? So, what, what did you find out about what was unique about Open Bisca? And when I ask that, is why couldn't you just encode the the rules engine right inside Drupal? Or is there other technology that's a better sort of black box for evaluation? I'm just kind of interested in, in that. Right? That's a sticky question. Definitely. That is a new question, <laughs> but I would say that's uh, even before new question. But I I try mm -hmm. to answer that a bit. Um, just a minute, Shivan is trying to enter. Okay, so all these kinds of conversations were done. Now, OpenFesca is something that is being that was being used by that was as Philippa uh, mentioned, it was created by trans government and it was being used as rules as code. We could have put that in Drupal as well, but we wanted a separate entity, a separate API that can then be accessed by anybody. It doesn't need to be just Drupal thing. We wanted to. Um, codify the rules into something that can be accessed by anything. It could be, for example, Alexa integration. It could be, and if you look, if you remember the solution architecture diagram that we had, we have a, had a layer which was maybe a website, maybe this, maybe that. So that was the main aim was trying to differentiate between the two. Number one, number two, for whatever we needed to codify the rules. Drupal would have been an over-engineering thing in the sense that Drupal is a content management system. That's pretty much it. So trying to use Drupal for codifying other rules would be sort of anti what Drupal is used for. Yes, we could, we could have done it, but it would not be a very efficient way of doing it. And again, this was a POC and while we were doing the POC as well, we were also saying, is OpenFesca the right tool or not? We are not too sure. Mm -hmm. But this is something that we picked and it worked for us. Because mm -hmm. sure. this idea about over engineering Drupal, except that I could I could see it being a separate Drupal sort of headless application, which could be its yes. evaluation engine, but I mean, it's probably a bigger discussion than yes, yes, It's a totally different discussion. We did have those kinds of conversations. But to be frank, by the time I stepped in, it was already decided that we will be using. In fact, um, in fact, some of um, like open fiscal was already on way to being developed the way we wanted to. But these are the kinds of discussions we had. These are the kinds of questions we already had. Yeah. And it was pretty much like this is a PLC. Um, we don't know what else will work, but we know this is working for our requirement. So might as well. Yeah, and I guess from my takeaway from what you presented. One of the, the power of Drupal, where it sits, once you come back with the evaluation in your example, uh, eligible or not, that's when all the auxiliary information that can be managed in, in Drupal can be presented. Like we were saying, you know, what node get presented, but you know, that could be information about Visor or Moderna or all that type of information all managed in Drupal, where I think this given this instance is just the Rules evaluation yeah. engine to bring so you back. It's kind of just the evaluation yeah. engine. It is yeah. not doing, it does not come back and tell us what to present to the user. Yeah. It does not come back and tell us um, what to do next. No. It doesn't do that. It's just an evaluation engine yeah. 
we send some variables with some values, it returns back some other variables with some more values, and yeah. that's pretty much it. Yeah. And Drupal is the one that decides what to do with that information. Yeah. So logic and content is separated accordingly. Yeah. 